in Matthew chapter 28, the last few verses of the book of Matthew, verses 18 to 20, we hear the most unusual statement from Jesus. And it really impacts how we see Jesus and how we relate to Jesus. He had risen from the dead. These were some of the last few words he spoke to his disciples, his followers, his apprentices like us, right before he ascended to heaven. So these are final words. You know how important final words are? So listen to these, some of Jesus' most final words. Jesus came and he told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Somebody say all. all. Jesus said, I've been given all authority on heaven, in heaven and on earth. So just think about that. One person is in charge, has authority over the whole earth. That's a pretty big statement. That is amazing. And only Jesus can make that statement. His authority is not affected by any presidential election. That's right. Presidents come and go. The King of kings and Lord of lords does not. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. There's no succession in this crown. Right. There's a, one crown, and that's worn by Jesus. No national boundaries hold him back. Yeah. Jesus Christ, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. All authority. And so what is he going to do with that, that authority? I just want to break down these, these uh, couple verses just a bit by bit so we don't miss anything. So he says, I've got all authority has been given to me by God the Father, therefore. Okay, now that is a word that sets us up for something. Therefore in the Bible means pay attention because of all the stuff that just went before it, something big is coming. So because Jesus has, uh, all authority has been given to him, he now is going to take that authority. So therefore, because of that, I'm going to tell you what I choose to do with my authority. One word, go. That's a very simple word. We probably use it almost every day, uh, several times a day. But Jesus chooses a, a, a root word for this word, that is a little bit special. It is, it is a nuanced word. And it, is, it comes from a phrase that Jesus would have read several times in the Old Testament. And it's, it's always translated like this. Go walk in God's ways. So we just see the simple word go, and we just think go. Well, I know what that means. I go to the store. I go here. I go there. Jesus is using this word form that's, that communicates to his, his listeners, go wa as, as you're walking in God's ways, go walk in God's ways. Now, that, that doesn't just mean like today we think, oh, okay, yeah, the path. Like this, this is, Jesus is saying, you know, get on the path that leads to God. That's not, that's not the meaning of this Old Testament word. <clears throat> this word says, God is God. He has all authority. He's in charge. And he has given us some ways that we must follow as his followers. It's not like, you know, all, all paths lead to God. Just choose whatever you want. That's not it at all. God says, here's the path. If you're following me, get on it. Let's go. And so Jesus echoes that by, by, using, by choosing this word for go. And then the next thing he says, and make disciples. And make disciples. So in other words, go disciple people. Make apprentices for Jesus. I, apprentice, I just feel like that is one of the best words that describes what a disciple is. What is a disciple? It's an apprentice. It's someone who's being with a master, someone who is following in the ways, the footsteps, the words of the master, and growing and learning to be more and more like the master. So Jesus is saying, go make disciples. Go make apprentices for Jesus. Now, where are you supposed to go? Of all the nations. So go make disciples of all the nations. And literally, that, that word for nations is people groups. So he, he's not even giving us a buy. Like, well, okay, I stopped by France, so we're good. It's not like that. Make sure that every people group on the planet has heard about the saving grace and love of Jesus Christ. So he's commander-in-chief 
of the world. <laughs> and he has commissioned all of his followers, all of his disciples to go change our world. And that's the title of my message today, Change Our World, okay. One Disciple at a Time. Jesus is saying, in essence, go conquer the world for me. Carry this good news of salvation everywhere to every ear. Make sure that every person hears it. And don't take a break until every person hears. And in fact, don't take a break until every person is following Jesus. So we might have spoken it, but if, if they're not yet following Jesus, our job is not finished. So when Jesus spoke to his disciples on that day, he knew this is a worldwide mission. He knew that those 11 people, 11 disciples remaining, uh, were, were not going to get this all done all by themselves, even in their lifetime. So Jesus really was speaking to all of us virtually. It was a virtual meeting with you and me back then, probably the first virtual meeting. And Jesus is speaking to all of us today, and he says, go and make disciples of all the nations. Each generation picks up where the previous generation left off, and we just keep going, and we want everyone to know about Jesus. So then, uh, what, what's the nature of it? He says, he goes on and says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And earlier today, we sang uh, the, how, what a wonderful name it is, uh, worthy is his name, uh, and there, for us, we think of a name as sort of a label. For God, his name is is a symbol of his presence. Yeah. Like, for example, he said uh, to, uh, as he was working with mankind a long time ago, he said, I want a place where I will be worshipped, the temple in Jerusalem, and it will be a place where I make my name to dwell. Like, it's more than just a label, like you'd put someone under your shirt or write on your lunchbox. It is a symbol. It's, it's God himself, his character, his name, his glory, his honor is there. And so Jesus says, baptize people. The, these new disciples, if they put their faith in me, then you got to baptize them in water. And that is the beginning point for anybody who puts their faith in Jesus. You, you, you pray, you, you confess your sins, you ask Jesus into your life, and you get baptized in water. Like that's, that's, bam, that's next step. And so if you've been following Jesus for a long time, and you've not been baptized, or if you're sort sort of newer to put your faith in Jesus, maybe you've just been kind of starting a walk with Jesus since Easter. We have a number of people in our congregation that are like that. Then you must be baptized in water. That's that's our next step. If you're putting your faith in Jesus, be baptized in water. I, I looked at the calendar. Our next baptism is a little bit after the remodel's done. <laughs> November fifth is the class. November 5th is the class. So would you put that on your calendar? If you want to follow Jesus, you must be baptized in water. That's, that's what he calls you to do. And it is, it is a sort of a seal on your decision. It's a public declaration. I am following Jesus. I am leaving the kingdom of darkness. And I'm, I've entered the kingdom of light. And Jesus said, go do that. And I, I just want to drop a little, another thought in your mind. If you invited someone and they have put their faith in Jesus... Would you encourage them to put their to to to, um, to be baptized in water? All right, so, so you're kind of you're discipling them. You're making disciples. Yeah, so keep it up. Good job inviting them. Let's take them the next step. Let's get them the next step. Let's get them the next step, and let's follow Jesus together. And then he says, "Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you." So how many of you are obeying all of Jesus' commands? Hundred percent? Yeah. Uh, I think we want to, yeah. but we're kind of not quite all there. And when, he, when uh, Jesus first spoke these words to his, to his disciples, imagine what they were thinking. So these guys have been following Jesus. They've been with him 24-7 for three years. And all of a sudden, Jesus, is, he's been crucified. He rose again on Easter. Wow, minds are blown. And now he's getting ready to leave them. And they're hanging on every word. They're like, oh, this, wow, you're asking us to do a big thing, Jesus. Imagine what they were thinking when Jesus said, I want you guys, you guys, to go teach everybody, make disciples, and teach them to obey all the commands I've given. I bet their first thought is, well, I'm not even <laughs> obeying all the commands. I mean, like, I've barely begun. Just think about what Jesus' commands were. He took the 600-some commands, I think it is, of the Old Testament, and he whittled them down to just a few summary commands. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And 
do to others the way you would have them do to you. Like he's, he, he, with, with each of those statements, he kind of said that it's either a, a, a supreme commandment or it's a summary commandment. Like that, wow, if you want to follow Jesus, do those things. And we all need to just keep practicing that and getting better and better at that. So these disciples, they're hearing Jesus give them this worldwide mission. They're thinking, oh my goodness, I've barely begun to follow all Jesus' commands. Uh, that, that's intimidating. And they're also thinking, wow, I've barely begun to conquer all my own hesitations. Here are these people, that his disciples were with Jesus. They're seeing him multiply food, walk on water. And each, they saw so many things like that. He raised the dead. He, he healed blind eyes. And each time they were like, oh, wow, he can do that. Each time they were surprised. I mean, they they're barely get it. They barely, barely get it. And when he was crucified, They didn't see that coming at all, even though he'd been saying it repeatedly in the weeks coming up to it. When he rose from the dead, they did not see that at all. What? Okay, yeah, I do remember he said he'd be flogged, but wait, wait, he's alive again? Uh, Each time, so they're, they're overcoming a lot of internal hurdles as Jesus is saying to them, okay, and by the way, I want you to conquer the whole world for me. Wow, it must have been like, that must have been kind of intimidating for them. They're thinking, I'm not educated. I'm not wealthy. I'm not um, well-connected. Uh, I am in a, in a country that's um, occupied by a foreign uh, army. Like, they're, they're just thinking of a lot of reasons why they cannot do this. And I'm sure they, they thought, Jesus, are you kidding? Like, are, are you serious? Like, how could this even be? And I love what one of the early church leaders, Paul, said uh, that really brings some clarity here. It's in the letter to the Corinthians, so 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 26 and 30. Paul wrote, remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes, or powerful, or wealthy, and that word literally means of noble birth. When God called you, you're not like in the succession to the Queen of England or something like that. And yet, Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. So he's saying it never was about how awesome you were anyway. It's about how awesome Jesus is and what he has done for you. And because of what Jesus has done for you and in you and your faith in him, now go conquer the world. And we don't mean like, beat it up. We mean lead it to Jesus. Yeah. Take it out of the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. I love the way the message paraphrase, it's sort of a poetic uh, um, paraphrase of those same verses, 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 26 to 28. I don't see many of the brightest and the best among you. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you, Paul. Uh, not many influential, not many from high society families. Isn't it obvious that God deliberately chose men and women that the culture overlooks and exploits and abuses? He chose these nobodies to expose the hollow pretensions of the somebodies. And I, I did not even realize till this moment how well that ties in to what our missionary guest spoke about earlier. So not only just talking about us, that we, we're, we're not a bunch of royalty or somebodies, but God chose us, but he also chose those even, even additionally marginalized people as well for something good. He's chosen them to be part of his kingdom. In uh, the second letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5.20, he said, so we are Christ's ambassadors. Say that. We are Christ's ambassadors. One more time. We are Christ's ambassadors. Think about what an ambassador does. God is making his appeal through us, his appeal to the world. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. We are actually Jesus' mouthpiece. He's speaking through us, through me, through you, when we say to people, come back to God. And I believe that the good news here is that Jesus deliberately chose you for his mission to save the world. Jesus deliberately chose you, my friend, to be part of his mission to save the world. He chose you, my friend. He chose you, my friend. He chose you, my friend. He chose you. you. Jesus deliberately chose you 
to join his mission to change the world, to save the world. Jesus is an old, old cliche, but it just, it just fits right here. Jesus doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You're all called, and then he'll get you ready and give you what you need to do to do his mission. So I hope that you know this. This matters. This, this should matter to you. I want this to matter to you because the greatest sense of fulfillment you will ever get in life is making a disciple. If you can even help be part of someone's journey towards Jesus, you will find a fulfillment that is beyond anything else because it is an eternal um, uh, result. It's a, it's a eternal, uh, it brings an eternal reward. If you can point someone to Jesus and their life changes and they begin to find Jesus' love and get healed of their past wounds and move on and help others, man, there is nothing more fulfilling for you. So I, I really want you to grab a hold of this, that Jesus deliberately chose you. You, you, you. Jesus chose you to, be, to join his mission to save the world. That is pretty awesome. So whether you play a lead role or a supportive role in any individual person's life, when you help make a disciple, you change their eternal destiny. Wow, that's so great and so beyond just the mundane that we often get our, you know, our, ourselves focused on all the details of life. And together, we change our world one, one person at a time. Your world was changed because someone influenced you to put your faith in Jesus and to begin to follow him. Our Hope in Life Church, our congregational vision is this, to see every person find real hope, and renewed life in Jesus. That inspires me, man. I, I get up every day and just go, that is a great vision that God gave us to see every person in our community, in our world, find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. And Jesus offers his real hope. He offers his renewed life through you, through me. We haven't done the work. He's made the sacrifice, but he speaks through you. God is through you saying, come back to God. He's offering hope and life through you, through me. Man, there is nothing better than that. To bring hope and life to a person who needs it. You are called and commissioned as apprentices of Jesus. So why don't we just all do it 24-7 every day? And I, I know there's many things that come up. Uh, sometimes, it, and it's, it's possible that you're just newer in, in your faith in Jesus and you didn't know that's part of your calling and now you know. You don't have to feel disconnected. You can feel connected to all the people who have put their faith in Jesus over the last 2,000 years. And we're all part of doing the same thing, leading people to Jesus, sharing his hope and life with them. Maybe you don't know how to make a disciple. And that's why I, I want to just say today, that you don't have to feel confused. You don't have to feel like you need a whole big a whole plan or some speech or something. Here's what you do. Just help a person come one step closer to Jesus. Just do what's right in front of you. If they have a need, meet it. If they need prayer, pray. If they ask questions, answer it. Tell them what, what Jesus has done in your life. That is really the best thing you can do. Not deliver a speech. Not, not, uh, not have a whole sermon or something, but just one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Just say, you know what? I was lost in addiction, and Jesus set me free. That is enough. Just start there. That is awesome. I was broken on the inside, and Jesus bound up my wounds, and I'm able to go on and, and live a productive life because Jesus healed me. That is an awesome way to make a disciple. Just tell someone what Jesus did for you. Maybe someone says, well, I don't really understand this whole Jesus thing. Well, then just tell them. If you'll notice, every single Sunday, at the end of every single service, I say the same thing. Partly because I want to make sure everyone gets an invitation. But the second reason is so you will know how to do it. And I bet you could do this by memory if you've been here by any, any stretch of, of time. And you'll see it in just a few moments. All right? This is not just, um, uh, not just for someone else out there. It is for all of us so that we know how to make 
a disciple. Maybe you feel ashamed because you know what you've done. You know you're not obeying all of Jesus' commands. And so the devil likes to whisper to people, hey, you better not say anything about Jesus because your life is not perfect. That is the devil. Can we just clear that up right now? He is the father of lies. Don't listen to that. Listen to Jesus who said, go walk in the ways of God and make disciples just as you are. He's talking to Peter who like four weeks earlier, uh, seven, I don't, I don't know math, yeah, for a while, a while, seven, six weeks earlier said, I don't even know Jesus' name. He, he totally let Jesus down. And Jesus is saying, Peter, go, go into all the world and make disciples. Even, even Peter, even you, even me. All right? So don't let anything keep you away. What if you actually said yes to Jesus' his appeal for you to join his mission and save the world? What would happen? Like, what, what, what would change in your life? Or, or what steps could you take? Uh, here's a couple. Maybe, maybe you would discover that the mission of Jesus is a, it, it's an all-church effort. It's a joint effort effort of the entire capital C church worldwide. People following Jesus together. We're on mission together. It's not all on your shoulders, but a part of it is all on your shoulders. There's, there's something that you can do I cannot do. There's someone that you know I do not know, and only you know that person. Only you. You have a part to play. So what step would you take to do your part? Like uh, one, one person may just simply invite somebody to church. That is a, that's a, to a church, uh, worship service. That is a great step. Uh, another person might share their testimony. Another person might pray. Another person might share the good news, the gospel, the story of Jesus. Uh, we all together around the church, we send missionaries. That, that's, that's, one thing, that's one thing we all do because we know there's places we can't go, so we're going to make sure someone gets there. <laughs> all of this is working together. It is, it is a joint effort by the whole church. Uh, maybe you would be a person that would, uh, would say, hey, I'm going to help one person this year go through our Following Jesus course. It's the basics. It's the basics of how to put your faith in Jesus and how to live for him. Every person who is a newer believer needs those basics. You've got to have them or you're going to be floundering. What if you said, I'll help someone. I'll, help, I'll just sit, sit down with them for coffee every other week uh, at, at, at the coffee shop. We'll get out the, the iPad, and we'll just go through the lesson together. That would be so amazing. You would be making disciples. So awesome. I, I love it. Maybe, maybe your step is to passionately pursue the power and presence of Jesus. Because we know Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. And Paul wrote in Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You don't have to be strong in yourself. You don't have to gear up, ooh, I must make disciples. I must. You just rely on the Lord's power and his strength, and you're going to be just fine. Uh, I, 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 another great um, passage is from Jesus in Acts chapter 1, verse 8 in the Bible. He said, you will receive power. The Amplified uh, translation says, you will receive the ability, efficiency, and might to do the mission. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So the power that you need to, to be effective in the mission is found in the Holy Spirit. And if you put your faith in Jesus, I want to encourage you to seek the gift, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And open up your heart, open up your life, and say, Holy Spirit, I want you. And say to God, I want all you have for me. I want your spirit, your power, your presence in my life. And the cool thing is, Jesus said, I will be with you always. That's how he ended his final words there. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In other words, I'm going to be with you until this mission is 100% completed. That every person on the planet has heard about my love. So cool. Would you stand and pray with me? Why don't you stand, and let's just bow your heads for a moment. You don't have to bow your heads to pray, but I, I feel like sometimes it just helps, to, helps you not be distracted, so I invite you to do so. 
And I want to pray for you. Let's pray. Jesus, I just want to thank you for choosing us. You deliberately chose me. And when I think of all the things you've allowed me to do in my life, I just, I just shake my head and go, I was an unlikely candidate, and yet you deliberately chose me. And look what we've done together, Lord. And each person hearing my voice right now, you deliberately chose them. You know how they are. You know their struggles and their victories. And yet, you deliberately chose them to join you in your mission. So we just say thank you. Could you say thank you? Thank you, Jesus, for that, that invitation. Thank you for the mission. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us something meaningful to do on this planet. Lord, we praise you. We love you. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would send your Holy Spirit. Some of us are seeking your Holy Spirit. We want to be baptized in your Spirit. Lord, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, come. Descend on this place. Whether you descend uh, like, quiet like a dove or powerful like a fire, I just pray, Holy Spirit, come. Come. For the person who's put their faith in Jesus but hasn't yet experienced that bapti baptism in the Holy Spirit, I pray this is their moment right now. We open up ourselves to you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to ask you, will you do your part? Will you either invite or testify? In other words, just tell what Jesus has done for you. Will you pray for somebody? Will you tell someone Jesus' story of love and sacrifice? Will you walk with someone through the following Jesus course? Will you do your part? Whatever it is, your part might be itty-bitty. That's okay. It, it also might be itty-bitty in one person's life, and it might be a, a really major role in another person's life, maybe your spouse or your kids or something. Will you do your part? Will you do your part? Jesus, through me today, is asking you, will you do your part and join him in his mission? to go and make disciples of all the nations. Will you do your part? Uh, could I ask you to bow your head one more time and I want to give one more invitation to prayer. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. Christians are taking notes right now. How do you do that? Turn away from your sins, all those things that separate you from God. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead just that simple. Start there. Start there. If today you would like to become a Christian, you would like to put your faith in Jesus, maybe you're coming back to him or for the first time you're putting your faith in Jesus to become a Christian, would you just raise your hand so it catch my attention so I'll, I'll pray for you specifically? And hands are going up. I just, I just love that so much. God is moving right now. He is, he is speaking to you. Or your hand wouldn't be going up. God is here. He knows you. He loves you. Several hands going up. So great. Let me just lead you in a prayer. And online, you can pray with us too. I hope your hand is up online. Uh, would you just repeat after me, but say it to God. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and let you lead I'll be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we just applaud people who are putting their faith in Jesus? That is so, so cool. And if you, if you have just raised your hand, uh, or uh, if you are, are putting your faith in Jesus today, we have the following Jesus course for you. It's really a fairly simple thing, but it takes a teeny bit of effort on your part. And it does to follow Jesus. It takes a teeny bit of effort. It's an online course, and we are beginning to set up people right now that would help you and kind of walk with you and mentor you through that course. If that would help, we offer that as, as an option. So following the service today, I encourage you to stop by the following Jesus table in the lobby. It's, there's a big, big banner, following Jesus. Head there. We're going to give you some actual physical materials for free. We're going to give you a book. 
and point you, uh, get, you, get you going in the right direction, all right? So make sure you do that today. I really, really mean it because we want to we see you begin to grow in your faith in Jesus, all right? So today, there, there's some, it's, a, it's a special day in, in many ways, but it's a special day. And so I want to invite you specifically to do a couple of things. Today, I've been looking forward to this day. This is the day I want to invite you into the kids wing some of you may not have even stepped in there since uh, we started remodeling there is a table blocking the way right by the nursery we're just going to slide that out of the way so you can walk in there and i just realized i don't know what i did with my markers so they're probably on my desk i'll, I'll, I'll go grab them or or i guess pa pastor christian well thank you they're sitting on my desk we have tons of sharpies oh uh, we sent out an email this week how many of you got the email from uh from the church this week anybody remember seeing it go by i would say maybe yeah, yeah, so if you didn't get one yet, just fill out a Connect card, and then you will get future emails. Uh, so the email said, come with a prayer, a blessing, or a scripture. And so I want to invite you, even if you weren't prepared, that's okay. Grab a Sharpie. We're going to write on the floor before the carpet goes down. So we're going to have a bed of prayer and of scriptures as a foundation for all the ministry that's going to be happening over there in the kids' wing. Super excited about that. I get emotional just thinking about it because it's not just a bunch of walls and lights. It's a place of ministry. I want to ask you to uh, only write something positive and encouraging. If you can quote a, a Bible verse, that's great. If you just want to pray a prayer for our church, for our future, great. Just write it down on the concrete. It's a little dusty, but wipe it out a little bit. I, I, I wrote the first one just right outside the nursery on the concrete. You'll see it there. Uh, I invite you to do that. So that should just take just a few minutes. Just write a prayer or a blessing or a scripture. And then as we've been doing each week, I, just, I know this is a lot to ask, but would you one more time at least, maybe, not probably not the last time, would you help us tear down the worship center? Uh, it, we, it, it, it takes about maybe 15, 20 minutes if we all pitch in together. So we're going to write verses first and then tear down in here. So we like to cover stuff to protect these things that God has given us and keep it, keep it free from dust and dirt, all right? Woo, that's a lot. Writing verses and prayers, then tearing down in here. Missionary will be in the back also. It's a little bit crazy. You may want to stay longer than normal. Just give people an opportunity or come write a verse and then come. Uh, but we'll be coming back this way, you know, to do worship center. So that there's more opportunity to stop by the table. All right. Wow, you guys, I love you so much. We love you. So glad you're here. Let's go write a blessing on the floor. All right, we just opened up the doorway right there, and I'm going to go grab my pants. God bless you. See you online, congregation.